friends, we're back for another lesson. This time we're talking about axial elongation. So we're talking about now if, if you have a beam or a shaft or whatever and you pull on it, right? If I pull on it, uh, it's going to get longer. Or if I push on it, uh, it's going to get shorter, okay? So it's getting shorter or longer along its axis. That's what we mean by axial elongation, okay? I've got a little example problem for you here, and they want to find the change in length of this bar from A with respect to E. So this is over here. Here's, a, here's A, B, C, D, and here's E. So from one end to the other, with these loads, okay, on them, they've got some kind of flanges that the loads are applied to, right? How, uh, how long is the bar after you apply these loads? Okay. Over here, I have a list of all the equations that we've talked about so far, and we're going to get today to add another equation, equation of the day, right? And it goes like this. Delta, which is the change in length. Delta usually means change, right? Change in length equals PL over AE, okay? So there's some familiar um, items in this equation P, we usually see P uh, as a force, right? We have P over A. I have N over A written, right? But uh, P over A is simply the force, the axial force that's making the beam either longer or shorter. So think of P as standing for push or pull, right? So it's either pushing on it or pulling on it, okay? L. L is the length, right? So however long each segment is, and we have different lengths on these segments, right? Uh, because we know about strain. Remember strain? Where's strain? There's strain. Remember that was in changes of length per unit length? So the more of something I have when it's loaded, the more it's going to stretch. So length definitely important. The A is just the cross-sectional area, okay? And so for this, this guy here, what we have is a 50 millimeter diameter and we got to be careful that we don't have because all these are in meters and that's in millimeters we, we got to be careful about mixed units right and then of course E what's E the modulus modulus of elasticity and we know about how to find that don't we Young's modulus uh, Hooke's law right uh, it's rise over run on our stress strain diagram it's stress over strain okay and for E, this is also a look em up. Okay? Which means if we have our book, we can just look that value up. If we know what kind of material this is, and we do, it's 2014 T6 aluminum. Okay? So we get our table. We got to go to the metric table. So we go to the uh, SI table for 2014 aluminum. Hey, that's the very first one on the table. And we need, we need to look up E, the modulus elasticity, and it's 73.1 gigapascals. Okay? So E equals 73.1 gigapascals. Or, or we could say 73,100 megapascals, which we know is a Newton over millimeter squared, right? If I have everything in the exact same units, it's easier for me to just cancel things out, right? Okay. I think the next thing that we should do is can you identify how much force is in each section uh, of this shaft? Okay. Well, here, I'm going to show you a little trick. Here's the easiest way to do. Think about if I was to cut that shaft in half right there and I was to look inside of it, okay? Let's ignore everything over here, right? So what is in that shaft over there? Eight kilonewtons going that way, right? Four and four, eight going that way. So this section of the shaft is in tension, isn't it? It's in tension. So this section here has eight kilonewtons uh, tension. And, that's, and, the, and identifying if it's in tension or compression is important because what? Well, if it's in tension, the delta is going to be getting longer. If it's in compression, the delta is going to be getting shorter. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to add up 
the stretch in that section plus the stretch in that section plus the stretch in that section plus this last one, and that'll give us our total stretch, won't it? Okay? What about, oh, wait a minute. That said eight kilonewtons tension. Well, what if, what if you covered up this side? What do you have? Okay, let's see. I got four. No, that's, yeah, four plus six more. That's ten. Oh, minus two. It's still eight kilonewtons in tension. So either side you look at, you're going to get the right answer, okay? So here, what about this section? Let's cover this all up, right? What do we have? I have three in tension and one in compression. So this one's bigger, so he's going to win. And so this winds up being two kilonewtons in tension, right? Uh, no, what are you doing? Six minus two is four is four, isn't it? I forgot about, I just did one. I didn't do two of them, did I? And this last section, what's going on in this last section? Well, this section is actually in compression, isn't it? Right? It's two kilonewtons in compression. Okay. And what about this guy? What do you think about this? Well, if I cover everything up, right, how much is in that guy? Uh, nothing. This guy is just kind of along for the ride out here, so he makes no difference. So the total elongation is going to come from this one, this one, and this one, okay? So let's go. Here we go. We'll go, uh, so delta total is equal to, all right, I'm going to do this one first, and I'm going to be really careful, right? When you get these big equations with a whole lot of variables in them, you got to be really careful with units, okay? Because delta is in what? It's a distance, right? It's a change in length, so it should be, well, let's make it in millimeters, shall we? So that it's going to give us an answer in millimeters, okay? So here we go. P for this section, 8 kilonewtons. I'm going to make it 8,000 newtons, okay? It was kilo. I, I made it into uh, 8,000, okay? Times L. L is in four meters, but I'm, I want everything in millimeters, so I'm going to make it 4,000 millimeters, okay, divided by A, the cross-sectional area. Well, that's just a pi r squared, pi times uh, the diameter is 50, so I'm going to use 25 here, okay, and that's millimeters squared, okay, and one more thing, and I have E, and E is in, I want to use that megapascals down there, 73,100 newtons over millimeters squared. Okay, so let's see what cancels out here. Millimeters squared cancels out. Um, there's a newton, there's a newton, and I'm left with just millimeters. That's what I want, okay? And this section here is going to be stretching since it's in tension, so he's positive. Next section, also positive, stretching, right? Tension, tension. Um, and it's going to be 4,000 times the length of that guy, 2,000, divided by, same exact thing, isn't it? Pi times 25 squared times 73,100, okay? And then finally, this last section here, and it's in compression, so that section is going to be shrinking, so I'm going to make him negative times 2,000, okay, times the length, 2,000, divided by pi times 25 squared, times 73,100, okay? Now, to make this a little bit easier, right, I can just do the tops of all of these. Add the tops, all of those together, the, uh, the numerators, and then it's like I'm, I've factored out all of those denominators, and I'll do that at the end. Is that cool? That's cool. Okay, here we go. So delta total is equal to, clear, 8,000 times 4,000 plus 4,000 times 2,000 minus 
2,000 um, times 2, right? No, times 2,000 equals. All right, a big number. And then that number I'm going to divide by, divided by pi equals, divided by 25 squared equals, and then divided by 73,100 equals. Okay, 0 0.2508. Okay, so the whole thing, right, this one stretched, that one stretched, and that one compressed. Could I find the stretch in each one of those? Yeah, I mean, here it is, right? Here's delta AB right here, right there, okay? This is delta BC, okay? And this would be your delta NCD, okay? There you go. That's pretty easy, isn't it? So this, my students call this the play equation. Do you see it? Play. And maybe that helps you remember that. But that that's what delta is. Um, and you know, what can they do on these problems to make this harder? Uh, they can make us calculate E, maybe from this equation here, to plug it in there. I'll tell you what, we'll, let's visit this again on the next, next uh, video, and we'll work a much harder one. All right, I'll see you next time.